Hey Liron here, thank you for joining me in another video. In this one we're gonna paint together this beautiful misty foggy uh, European kind of cityscape view and I want us to approach this with the mindset of experimentation and see what we can learn from this kind of a reference using a black and white reference photo, okay? I was originally planning for this to be a talking video of me just sharing a couple of things that have been on my mind and a couple of changes I want to make, a couple of new things I want to try, but I feel like the insights need to cook a little more, so I decided to do this, see what kind of insights we get from that, and maybe just being in the zone will help me reach the insights I want. So with that being said, let's take it to the table and get started. So as always, we'll start with the drawing stage. Now I always say I'll keep it short and then it always ends up being too long. So here I will really keep it short. I'll just sketch the shapes that I see. We don't, we aren't going to worry too much about uh, composition, um, perspective and all of that. Composition is important, but not perspective. So uh, we have um, this, the bridge, goes kind of to this point. So here we go, the horizon line, if you will, is somewhere around here, which is actually where the uh, river or lake meets the, um, the, the land. And then this takes up a small space, so it goes kind of like that, that's for the bridge. Then it goes around like this. Here we have the leftmost part of the bridge, kind of the, the thing here. I'm gonna leave the composition exactly the same, I won't change a thing. Um, so we go like this. I initially planned to make this part lower, but I'm gonna leave it. Uh, this all connects. There are some people here, but that's not really important for this stage. This is really thick, I made it a little thinner, that's fine. And then the bottom part of the bridge goes like this. This meets the water here. And we've got kind of one, two, three, and then the fourth maybe around here. So these arches can be challenging to sketch. Do the best you can. Um, it's not always easy, but as long as they're kind of decent enough, they'll look good. Um, another one here. And I can change things around later on with the um, painting stage, but for now I just want to keep it simple. I know it's not the exact same number. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I actually did five. That's fine. Uh, so here we go. These two towers. One, two. I'm sketching them only because they're gonna have some highlights that I want to preserve later on, okay? Uh, but other than that, they don't really play an important role. This entire thing is going to be in the fog together. And then we have this tower here. We'll render its shape just with paint. I'm just putting this to know where to place it, okay? And then we've got all the reflections of the arches. Let's just go with this kind of a thing and then later on we can um, add the actual details. Here there's a light and shadow division. And there are a couple of details on the bridge. I'm gonna leave that for the paint. We'll let the paint speak with this one. Okay, so a very simple drawing. Now let's move on to the painting stage. Okay, so we're ready to go with the first wash. And um, I'm gonna start with an initial wash in which all I care about is leaving a couple of highlights here and there. Uh, but I will generally cover everything up. Now the light comes from the right. So the right side section is gonna be fairly well lit. Uh, so here we go. I'm gonna try and keep it light while leaving some uh, highlights where necessary. And I'm gonna treat this, and I love this stage, the initial wash, as a the, the pencil lines are a recommendation only. That's how I like to treat them. So you don't really have to worry about following them exactly as you see them, which is the, the most fun part, really. This entire left part is in the shadow, so I'm gonna cover it up. I don't care about that, really. Even the, the light parts here are gonna be fairly dark, but here I can start thinking about some highlights. So we have a couple of lights here. Uh, this is gonna be an important part too, and if I miss something, I can always go back with you know a white pen or opaque paint and bring it back, but I prefer if I can get it in one go, that's ideal. Um, so just a couple of highlights here on top of these uh, spires, or whatever you want to call them. 
we have a bit of highlights here on the right sides of these domes so here we go like that that looks good and from here I think we can pretty much continue I'm just gonna keep it fairly light really for the rest of this thing there is another highlight here at the bottom of this part of the bridge I'm gonna leave that and cover everything here up and as much as the, the bridge itself seems to be light, it's actually close to the sky. It's not really white. I wouldn't leave it as a white highlight. You could, but that would be exaggerating the values a little too much to my taste here. Um, there are some pretty light ripples on the water that I'm considering to preserve. Now, uh, let's see what they look like. I think I'll leave these two here, maybe another one right around here. Maybe like that. I think I'll leave this part as is. Now all I'm thinking about is whether I want to push in the darkness in some spots. So this area is really dark and I know the paint starts to dry here so I have to be a little careful but let's darken this up a little so that we at least get a bit of a gradual change from left to right. It'll just save us some steps down the line. I don't know why this paint stinks. <laughs> Never stunk before, but who knows. Um, maybe it's my imagination. Uh, here we go. It could be the paper too, actually. So this is going to be a little darker. This will hopefully blend well. I don't know. We'll see. I like that. Uh, these reflections and areas inside are darker. Let's try. Let's play around with it and see how much we can get away with here at this still pretty wet stage. <clears throat> but I think I'll let this dry now. I think this is good to go. Um, a very simple initial wash. I thought to myself whether I want to take more time with it, but I think this works well. So I'm gonna let it dry and then come back for the second layer. So now this is fully dry and I'll get going with the rest of the painting. I'm gonna start with this very um, light uh, layer here in the background. And we'll see how that goes. Now, one tip, uh, I see a lot of my students sometimes uh, don't think about, or um, I don't want to say mess up, but it's just something that a lot of people don't think about is when you paint, try and treat the entire shape you're going to paint and focus on that. So right now what I'm doing is I'm not, it's not like a coloring book where I work around the outlines, then fill in the middle or the, the inside. What I'm doing here is, I'm treating the entire or I'm respecting the entire shape and that's something really important I'm building up the shape itself okay um, and this should be fairly light this section and I may have gone even too dark so let me add some water to the mix here and spread it out a bit and see what we got okay so here we have again these couple of highlights um, from the light uh, public lighting of the bridge I guess uh, and keep it moving to the right and with these kinds of shapes it's nice to work from uh, left to right for example uh, because it, um, it gives you a better control of the entire shape okay I'm holding the brush fairly close to the tip because I do want to have some control here so this is another light and another light a little farther away continuing here now it's almost very misleading but the value here is very similar to the value of the these s sections of the I don't know what these poles are but you see here uh, all I have to really do is leave this one highlight here and that's it um, this I can cover up completely but just leave the highlight here and as long as I can do it fairly uh, quickly without fussing too much with it uh, it'll end up looking good I will cover this too I will cover it up later on I just need to remember to add some more darkness to it okay in the next layer these are just trees you can try and get in some texture but as long as it's it looks random and it's not too um, repetitive you're good to go uh, it looks quite dark in the camera which makes me wonder because when I look at it on paper it's not that dark uh, so I don't know but in any case here we go like that I'm gonna keep this area again with the highlight here 
then what happens here is really cool it just connects to this tower but the thing is I, I didn't put anything for this tower and it gets a little darker so I'm gonna make it a little darker so we have this rounded shape kind of like a dome and on top of that we have these very thin lines in it so something like this I'm painting rather small here so had I painted larger I'd try and getting a bit more details in but as long as it tells the story in this case I'm fine I do want to do some more uh, larger pieces but in any case here we go maybe I'll just get one more through here and that's it um, so this kind of tower now here I will get a bit of unevenness because I came back a little too late but that's fine we'll just mix it all together with some nice looking shadows here let's do the background of this structure wet and wet and then as we go down it's gonna lighten up again so let's go back to the right with the lighter value and also downwards uh, with a bit of a lighter value and that actually connects to the edge of the bridge here and so here we go like that here we have one highlight but then underneath it we have a bit of a darker highlight that's still gonna be a highlight so let's finish with this part up the lower section is relatively um, light so here we go this part gets a little darker now here something interesting happens let's go break through this wall like so and we get to the water now here I really need to think about it and figure out what I'm gonna do and how I'm gonna proceed I think I'll add a reflection for that tower here but I'm gonna keep it fairly simplistic and that's gonna be everything in terms of the water in this section okay I know it's very simplistic and uh, you could go into more details but I prefer not to actually in this example so let me soak back up some of the water here and then perhaps we can add a bit of a reflection for these two because you do see them so here we go I could pre-wet this area like this and then kind of pour in the paint so let's try that kind of thing see and then I'll get even more well blended edges and I think that's it for this section now what we have to figure out is how we connect it to the bridge <laughs> this section is starting to dry I'm actually gonna work on the the arches down there uh, or yeah arches here so first one and here some editing is required mainly because it's just hard to make out exactly what happens in the photo so I'm gonna start fairly light with this first arch that's the farthest away and add its reflection but still very light and fairly simplistic and connected to what we have here okay just making that connection because they're so close the next one's gonna be slightly darker so I'm adding more black paint here just a little bit and I'm gonna go for that the thing is the beautiful thing about these arches is they're completely detached from the rest of the top of the bridge so I can actually work on them in sort of a vacuum see what I mean I can just focus on them let's um, switch to a smaller brush let's move on to this one for instance the previous was uh, silver black velvet which I love um, and I'm, I've been using for like I don't know four years now and they're still fantastic uh, by the way I'm, I am linking down to every material I use in the description box so make sure you check that out now as I look at it the water needs to be darker unfortunately so I'm gonna darken this whole thing up and I know it's gonna go over some areas I already painted so let's do this I'm gonna darken it up we have to sometimes improvise no choice with the watercolor so it has to be darker so I'm gonna add a bit of darkness to it and I'm actually gonna connect it to the ripples here and make this entire section darker because it's it needs to be darker and this is gonna be black on the left but this is an interesting opportunity because what I can do is first add in a couple of um, reflections the fact that I darkened it doesn't mean I cannot add reflections I'll, I'll even add this kind of a shoreline here so the main reflection is obviously gonna be this tower here hopefully it won't look uh, overworked 
uh, and everything will kind of fall to its place. That's that's what I can hope for. Uh, but who knows? And then we're gonna go like this. And what I want to do now is quickly get these in in time for a nice blended reflection. Because what's better than doing this effect is just having a blended reflection because of the properties of water. So here we go. And I have to be quick because this area is, uh, is gonna dry if I don't work fast, okay? So here we go, like that. And then the closer it gets to us, the darker it has to be. This is actually just a half, half uh, an arch because the other ones, the other half is hidden behind this thing. And there are some details that we're gonna add in just a moment, some extra details here, but let me straighten out some lines here because it's not fully straight, so here we go. Here too I need to inject some more paint into the water, but not too much, I want to keep this fairly uh, blended. And then this I actually like, this is a good shape, because we're gonna have the highlight, I'm just gonna cut through it a bit with a few ripples, but it's gonna be the highlight of this part that's in the light. I'm gonna darken the top part of the arch again, like so. And I have to straighten this line. It's sometimes you have to go at it a couple of times until you get it right, no choice. There we go. And once I add in some mid values to the bridge, it will all make a little more sense, you'll see. Uh, another shape I want to straighten out is this part here. And we're good to go. So the next part I want to focus on, and this isn't something I would typically do, is actually this well shaded area. And why is that? Because I want to give myself some kind of a range. I already know what the mid values are, but I still don't have a true dark. So I want to put in the dark and that'll help me see the rest. So I'm gonna put in this line here um, and this is all in the shadow. Now I have an artistic license to edit it, uh, of course, and so I can change some of the values, not have them as dark. There are a couple of people here. Uh, you can actually see them on the reference photo. So I'm gonna put them in. And then there's this, uh, you know, the protector, the protecting ledge of the bridge or something like that. Now I'm insisting on staying with the same brush, but you can change it to a uh, smaller one if you want to get more accuracy. So I'm going here now. What I love about these large dark areas is that you have relative freedom because you can't really see and make out the details. So here we have another arch that's super dark. It's actually probably one of the darkest areas of the painting. So I'm putting that in, including the water here at the bottom, um, all the way to, let's say, here, because I want to blend it out. And then I'm going to continue with this trajectory uh, around here. And here there are a couple of small shapes that I may want to get in. So here we go, something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want it to be kind of resembling what I see enough so that it actually creates an interesting realistic impression, okay? Now from starting from this line and to the right, I'm gonna blend. So I'm using, I'm bringing some water in with my brush, dabbing some of it on the towel, and I'm just gonna help the paint move, you see? It's gonna move and create that beautiful rounded feeling around this building, also in the water, okay? Now this won't be enough, so I'm coming back with a bit more water, and I'm just doing the exact same thing, helping some of the paint move. And then here there are some spots that I would like to darken further. So there's this line here. This entire area of the water is super dark, really. This middle section here is very dark. I love that you can see some of the arch, but not everything. Here I'm gonna close it off. This is fairly dark all around. So we've got this shape. Then I kind of messed up the placement of the part that goes round, but that's fine. Um, I am trying to make a move into more realistic rendering, slowly but surely. So this is still very impressionistic, but you will hopefully see some more realistic work of me uh, in the near future, because I feel like I'm sometimes relying on too many crutches uh, when I work, and I don't want to be in that situation. I actually want the ability to render, even when working impressionistically, to render high-quality, accurate um, representa representations of what I see. 
So it gets more and more important to me. So I really want to focus on that, which means some studio work from photos, slowly, carefully, very measured. Uh, so we'll see about that. Here we have this part of the statue and it just goes up and outside the frame. Usually I wouldn't do it. I would bring everything down a bit, but here I just thought it would work. So why not? Now here there is a, this weird line. The problem here, if I come back with a wet or wash, it's gonna create cauliflowers like hell. So I'm coming back with a strong wash still, just to balance things out a little here. And then I will come back with kind of a watered down wash. We'll see what happens. Okay, let's see if I can get away with it. Sometimes the, the blending action won't produce perfect results. Um, if you don't work fast enough, if, if you can improve, which everyone can improve, and I definitely have room for improvement. So, or if you come back with a, a wash that is too wet and it just moves some of the paint. So a lot of these things can happen. I'm trying to do my best here, but it won't be perfect. Let's just move it all the way here. But I do like the feeling that's created uh, here with the, the reflection in the bottom. I think it works really well. I don't want to kill that effect, so I'm going to stop here. Now here we have a couple of also uh, some dark stripes on the bridge itself. So let's put those in. Uh, we have these uh, balconies, I guess you could call them. So again, not painting what I think is there, but rather the way I see it as cleanly as I can. This is the best advice I can give you really. When you focus on just painting it as you see it, uh, the results tend to be a little better than if you try and actually draw every single line you see. Now I'm gonna switch again to a smaller brush. Let's move to this Princeton. I don't know why I'm forcing myself to use these large brushes and I can barely get the details in. So now here I messed up a bit because you can see that this is a curvy kind of section. So let me try and remedy it just by, I don't know, playing with the impression. As long as it works in a more abstract manner, it should work. So I'm just gonna blend this down here and this will show you how to deal with mistakes on the fly. The next time I'm gonna paint this scene, I'll obviously well, probably not make the same mistake again because I'll be a little more accustomed to it. Um, but in any case, I'm gonna continue with this line while I have it, so all the way to the back. Then let's get started here with this uh, curved line. So I'm gonna go like this and this time I'll get it right with the correct position. Then I'm gonna connect it to uh, the balcony at the edge of the bridge here. And then I'm gonna blend it as fast as I can because this is a rounded type of structure. And I'll also blend these in here because there's a bit of a mid value to their side that I wanna get. So this is another one. Now here it gets a little less important because it's much farther back so I'm starting to water down these little things here so here we go and a couple of smaller details that aren't as important at this stage we have pretty much enough details I'd say in this sense so what I'm gonna do is just let this rest for a while then I come back and add some details here and I think we'll be able to wrap it up maybe darken some of these reflections too so we've got just a few small touches and we're done here. One of the things that bug me is these sharp lines between the poles and the water. So I'm gonna try and blend this transition in. We'll see how that goes. Just a bit. And I actually don't even care if I get some blossoms. Just brought some uh, toilet paper. I don't care if I get some backgrounds because it will be worth it. So here we go and I'm starting from the back because there it's gonna be even more blended and the closer we get to us, in theory, the sharper the transition gets. So here we go, you see? Just making it a little more gradual. I know I'm scratching off some of the paint, that's fine. I just wanna make the transition itself a little more gradual, okay? Hopefully I can achieve that effect. So that's the first. Now, the second thing is I do wanna sharpen um, the reflection here just on the very left section, okay? So let's darken this up a bit so that we can connect it to the reflection. And now let's sharpen up the shape of this. So we're gonna go like this, kind of crisscross movements. And minimal gaps really. And near the bottom is where you can, if you want to just blend some of it in with the rest. 
So now it's, it's a little more defined at least. And the other ones I actually love, so I don't want to change. And then I'm just going to add another small detail to it, which is the tops here of these towers. This is more important than you think, because it, it kind of sets the... It will create a nice contrast with the highlight for sure, but it also gives us this more interesting of a backdrop here. So here we go like that. Notice how beautiful it looks when you see this hazy kind of color in the background. There is some kind of an object here. I'm gonna get that in as well. Um, I don't know if this is a... Uh, I did this highlight on purpose, but we'll leave it for now. No choice, really. Um, and then connect it to uh, the bottom here. Make it just a little bit darker, perhaps. Close this off. And I think with that really we're pretty much done. All that's left really is to add some details. So I'll just add a couple of uh, lines to, to represent the, I don't know, bricks on the left, I guess. But other than that, we don't need anything really. So I'm gonna get started here so that I'm trying not to overdo this, okay? That's a really important thing when you're doing these kinds of, of um, scenes. You don't want to overdo any effect, really, because that will hurt the realistic impression. So I think if I can just get in a few bricks, really, um, we're going to get the impression of a brick wall, a brick texture. Uh, believe it or not, I think this one is done, really. I'm, I'm very pleased with it. Just a couple of touches here and there, trying not to overdo it. Obviously, the lamps that I completely forgot about. Let's darken this up just a little bit. Lamps here and here. I could also add the actual thing up top like this. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it works really well. Uh, and is it? I think I like how it's a combination of very blended and very sharp areas. It has pretty much everything you need. I don't want to overwork it. I probably will make a larger version, but I really would love to keep this fresh and nice. And I love how, again, very blurry, very blurry, very sharp in the middle. Uh, but in any case, now let's wrap it up. So here's the end result. I hope you enjoyed exploring this scene with me and really based on my past experiences, I knew that it's time to stop. This may seem incomplete. It may very well be incomplete, but um, I think at some point you get a feeling for this is time to stop. What I'm gonna do will not improve it. And I don't feel like it will improve it greatly. I could add just a couple of details here in the haziness, but I love the way it looks now and I think it's a good basis for a larger piece. So I'll probably set this aside open up a larger piece of paper and try to recreate it slowly, more carefully, and by dev devoting more time to each section um, individually. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. And again, sometimes I'll just take a scene that I'm unfamiliar with or I'm not used to the effect that is viewed in it and just tackle that. And I think uh, it's a great way to learn. It's a great way to improve. And I want to challenge you to do as much of that as you can. If you're used to very saturated scenes, go for a black and white one. If you're used to very sharp light and shadow conditions, go for a foggy light and shadow conditions. Go for a, something you're unfamiliar with. I think that will help a lot. It will also help with letting go. By the way, I could have blended these edges up like all day and they would have been much better. But in any case, um, this is something that will help you loosen up because when you try something you're unfamiliar with, sometimes you can let go of all the preconceptions and preconceived notions you've had on it and you're just kind of approaching it in a more fresh way. Hopefully that makes sense. I will remind you in the description box below you'll find two things. One is my frustration free watercolor course. If you're struggling with watercolor painting, you're unsure, you don't know, you feel like you're trying, you're running through a wall, be sure to check it out. It will teach you how to let go, enjoy the process and get the results you want. Okay, both the vision and the techniques. I'm going to talk about everything there. And another thing is if drawing is what keeps you or holds you back, be sure to check out my beginner's drawing course. I've been, you know, marketing it for a long, long time now. Feedback is really good and I think it's a, it's a good basic course on how to be able to sketch what you see accurately. That's basically it. Um, nothing fancy, no fancy techniques, no, you know, it's not really advanced. It's very beginner uh, oriented. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you're still watching, be sure to give this video a like. That really, really helps with the YouTube algorithm to make the video get to more people. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, consider subscribing because I have tons of other tutorials like this one you just watched. I want to thank you so much. I will see you again in the next video.